What is going on everybody? Thank you so much for jumping in to this video today. My name is Danny Coldblood, aka my music vidiot. And in the world of Grand Theft Auto, we were given a recent update. That update was called Smuggler's Run. And I want to go ahead and talk about something that I've noticed while looking into Smuggler's Run and then other connections that I've made and I want your opinion, your feedback as this is a team effort if we're ever going to get this thing solved. So thank you guys for jumping in and let's get in to the video. The Smuggler's Run update gave us the option to now purchase more air vehicles and while looking at some of these air vehicles I went ahead and noticed that some of these descriptions hold some pretty interesting clues if you ask me which I will be going ahead and showing you guys in an upcoming video I've been working on this video for a couple days now so when it comes out it should be pretty good so stay tuned for that as I'm looking at some of the descriptions here for the new vehicles these new air vehicles I thought about the video that I just recently posted and that video talked about clues that were hidden in plain sight by Rockstar and one of those clues was if you go to your settings and you go down to Facebook there's a list of different things that Rockstar shares after you complete and one of those things were to buy and drive all legendary motorsport vehicles and it kind of caught me off guard why just legendary there's other companies you could buy cars from in this game and why just cars why not the other uh, vehicles like the air vehicles or the boats so as I'm looking at the newest descriptions for the newest air vehicles here in GTA 5 given to us by the smugglers run update I started thinking about the other vehicles that we've had maybe from even the beginning of the game's release so I went ahead and looked at Elitas. I came across the Luxor Deluxe and the Swift Deluxe and I remember thinking a certain thought when these vehicles came out and that thought was why the fuck would I spend 10 million dollars on a Luxor Deluxe when they have a Luxor for 1,625,000 and something didn't seem right to me because of the price difference just so I can have a gold plane I overlooked it and I didn't really have anything at that point but if you guys have been watching my recent videos you know that gold is a big key word and that's what we're looking for guys is key words gold is a key word when looking at this mystery and I've explained that in the past few videos so if you guys have not checked that out definitely go and check out those videos but I realized that there is certain things that this game might be doing and they are doing it in a subtle way hidden in updated vehicles and I believe that clue was gold so while I'm looking in smugglers run and I'm seeing all the new vehicles and the different uh, aircrafts and stuff that we have in the descriptions I'm starting to wonder about other aircrafts and the descriptions and maybe just maybe we should focus on some other stuff that we may have passed by or not really focused on correctly when we went through it the first time so I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the Maverick for today so looking at the Maverick we see the description and it says a two-bladed twin-engine helicopter the Maverick was manufactured in Canada but you shouldn't let that put you off originally designed for military use when the army rejected them for looking too French they became hugely popular with rich social climbers for exactly the same reason used by law enforcement for surveillance operations 
you'll often see them hovering above inner city African American neighborhoods. Billion candle power spotlights and loudspeaker optional. But trust us, it's fun to play with over poor neighborhoods at night. Now this really caught my attention because of a couple different things. Let me break it down for you guys here. This first section, I believe, is a direct link to Trevor as when him and Floyd are going down to Los Santos in search for Michael Townley. We know that he talks about being um, a pilot in the Air Force, the Canadian Air Force. There's even a couple more connections to Trevor. Trevor has the hangar over at McKenzie's Airfield for purchase where he does the gun running missions and uh it's crazy because the dune buggy just like smugglers run and then we have this vehicle okay the cuban the cuban is actually the vehicle that we use with trevor at mckenzie's airfield and comes with the purchase of the hangar in gta online also, Trevor is the only one that can buy the Zancudo t-shirts. And Trevor is able to buy a pair of the Desert Camel Pants, which is very similar to what the soldiers at Fort Zancudo wear. Not only is Trevor the only one that can wear this outfit, but Trevor also lives on Zancudo Avenue. This is also a very memorable location as we take control of Trevor for the first time here and we kill off Johnny from GTA 4's Lost and the Damned. Now, not only that, but in this same exact area in Trevor's little neighborhood, we have streets that are tied directly to Red Dead Redemption, like Chala Springs and Armadillo. And since the Smuggler's Run DLC is focused primarily around the military air vehicles and the hangars and Fort Zancudo, is definitely worth mentioning and taking into consideration the star that we're looking at right here on Trevor's back, okay? Because the design of the roundels, or the stars, painted on the hangers are similar to that of the defunct United States Army Air Force. And this variation of the roundel was only used from 1941 to 1947 leaving the implication that the base has been active for roughly 70 years. And that, my friends, is tied directly to Rockstar's past yet again with L.A. Noir, a game all about a mystery as you are a detective trying to solve cases. Now, talking about Rockstar's past, this also connects back to the vehicle that I'm focusing on for today, and that is the Maverick. Next it says used by law enforcement for surveillance. Now that's one thing that we all suspect the military base Fort Zancudo to be doing with the UFO that's hovering directly above the base. Kind of spying and surveying everyone on the map. And this theory is kind of backed up even on the in-game radio as an internet article from Weasel News after doing the mission Blitz play reports that Fort Sancudo has plans of opening a drone base near the fort. The article points that the base is going to bring needed jobs to the area and that they are probably going to change the law to enable the drones to help fight the menace of illegal aliens. So that's some pretty good information to keep in your back pocket. I think that's really interesting as well. It says that you'll often see them hovering above inner city African American neighborhoods. Okay, billion candle power spotlight and loudspeaker optional. Now that's really strange to me. It really stands out to me because that's not the first time that I've heard this game 
use the word candle in a weird way. You creeping on some fools, huh? All right, nigga, we'll handle your candle. Handle your candle. Handle your candle. Now that's pretty crazy. It stood out to me, like I said, and I want to go ahead and mention to you guys that we have been given clues like our path is lit. At the end of this description, it says it's fun to play with over poor neighborhoods at night. That also ties directly to Rockstar's past as the first GTA game that ever came out was a top-down view, a top-down perspective. We also know that the helicopters and I believe the blimp are the only vehicles that can have that view. The planes cannot go into a top-down perspective. So what are they trying to tell us? Is there stuff that we should be looking for? We know that looking at the map from the pause menu, which is also a top-down perspective, we see Mirror Park and at night in the game, it's lit up and it looks like a strawberry. During the pause screen, it looks like a real heart with like the two ventricles. And I talk all about that in my Undead Nightmare Apocalypse video. And that video is got more evidence than anything based on Rockstar's past backing up what could be happening currently in the game when it comes to an apocalypse. So if you've not checked out that video, I'll link it in the description as well for you to check out. So there's a lot of stuff that this game is telling us to do. And when we look at this map, I also want to go ahead and point out one last thing. We don't see Ford Zancudo on this map in single player. And that might be because of one more connection. When looking at the name Maverick, in real life, the Maverick is actually used a lot in aviation as it is used in this game. But it's also used in navigation. There's something called the Maverick app, and it's a GPS navigational app that uses offline maps. Now that is big. That's a big clue to the final thing I'm gonna bring up here. And we're gonna go ahead and talk about the movie Top Gun. Maverick was the call sign of Pete Mitchell in the film Top Gun, played by Tom Cruise. Maverick, was aboard an aircraft carrier, and he and his radar intercept officer, okay, a radar intercept officer, Nick, aka Goose Bradshaw, were given the chance to train at the Navy's Fighter Weapons School in San Diego. Now that's crazy because we have a flight school here in San Andreas, both California, fictional and non, and the part that really gets me is the radar intercept officer, okay? We talked a lot about different things with the satellites and the radio telescopes. As you can see on the screen right now, we are in GTA Online. We have missions called Top Fun, Top Fun 2, Top Fun 3. Also, I want to bring up that that mission Top Fun was not the first time that we've seen a mission called Top Fun when looking at Grand Theft Auto. We had Grand Theft Auto Vice City, which included a mini mission with the same name and backing up the connections more and more. But when we look at the word Maverick when it comes to computers, like we just said, it's also a navigational app that uses offline maps for GPS. Now, when we looked at the map, we did not see Fort Zancudo on this map because Fort Zancudo is a restricted area, so it must remain secret from aerial view. And it's the same as Bolingbrook Penitentiary. So guys, I have to ask you, could this map that we are looking at when we are in our pause menu not just be a regular map, but maybe a certain type of map. Maybe a map that gets its view from a satellite, and that's why certain areas are blocked off, because they are restricted and blocked out by different 
technology or whatever, when we're online, now we can see online, offline. Maybe the reason we cannot see this in single player is because we're offline. This opens up a whole new way of thinking and you guys are awesome hunters. You give great support and you give great feedback constantly. So I cannot wait to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know what you think in the comments below as I really do think that when we pay close attention and we really do a little bit of research, we can find that the information can be so big that we can possibly even use it as some of the biggest tools needed when looking to solve the Chilean mystery. I want to thank you guys all for jumping in. It's been an honor and a pleasure. I'll see you guys in the next video or broadcast. So take it easy. Ta-ta and as mother fucking always. Peace.